mental health can be a challenge, but sometimes our houseplants can help us find a bit of peace and a bit of quiet when everything else just seems a bit too much. Stick with me as I share my journey with mental health and my houseplant connection. Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel, Has Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today's video is going to be slightly different. I will pick up a couple of plants and show you throughout the video, but predominantly I want to talk through some of my journey with my own mental health and taking care of my plants and what that has meant as well. I share a few kind of snippets of stories that I've heard along the way through my journey about how houseplants and houseplant collections have actually helped a lot of people deal, not necessarily overcome, but deal with, with their own kind of mental health challenges along the way. So if this is something that you're interested in, let's dive into it. So a lot of people when it comes to their own mental health, especially people within the wider community, because I've met quite a few of you now at different events, we talk on messages, DMs, all of these things. And the one thing that I'm seeing pop up again and again and again is actually how a lot of us are using plants to help improve our mental health. And that could be a range of different things. So people that have been here for a while, they know that I have struggled with stress and anxiety. I used to have horrible panic attacks for a long period of time. And I found a bit of peace within my houseplant collection. And I know other people who might suffer from stress or anxiety or depression or, and I think I'm trying to remember now, there's people with, um, I've spoken to with OCD as well. There's people who might be neurodivergent as well. And all of us tend to find some peace and some kind of solace within our houseplant collection. I say all of us, I'm assuming this, because based on the people that I've talked to at least, I can see that this is kind of an ongoing trend. And it's something that I've seen happen at a lot of these events, a kind of plants and mental health comes up a lot. So I'm assuming this is a bit more of a wide kind of reaching subject than most of us might think actually. So brief kind of like what my journey was into Plant Parenthood and I have done a much longer video and I will link it at the top of that longer video. Words on a Sunday. It's not even Sunday, Saturday. Oh my God. We're starting off well. <laughs> Let's carry on. <laughs> but yeah, so essentially my plant journey was that, and I've said this before several times, started off very young, caring for my mother's kind of houseplants on our balcony, then progressed to when I was actually at university, and I think I was doing my second degree then, or my first degree, I can't remember. It must have been the second degree, because that's when my panic attacks really started coming on strong. And actually, I hadn't made the connection at that point, because I didn't have, ah, I didn't have a collection like this. I had a few houseplants, but it did help. Looking back on it now, the fact that I had those plants to care for really did help bring me out a bit of my own head and my own stress levels and it gave me something to focus on. Many years later when I kind of added a lot, <laughs> a lot more plants to my collection I can still see the benefits of having that collection. So definitely a big turning point for me is kind of making that connection and actually being able to be a bit more cognizant with it and not use it, but kind of, yeah, <laughs> take advantage of it if I can, essentially. So for me, and this is gonna be very personal to everybody, and I do encourage you, I know this is a bit of a challenging topic, basically, and not a lot of people might feel comfortable sharing. If you are comfortable sharing, on a more public forum, please do so in the comments down below, because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, and I would have been one of those people when I was struggling with my own mental health, that would have appreciated seeing that you're not alone kind of in what you're dealing with. But I'll share my story, because <laughs> I've got the channel and I can essentially. But 
yeah, it, it it was a case of, and I think for me, it was the the stress levels that I was putting myself under it at that point was to do with my degree, trying to get a really good grade. And it's that kind of notion of kind of hyping yourself up throughout all of your education to get to that final pinnacle point to then get a decent grade. In the grand scheme of things, and I really hope that somebody had told me this at that point, and this might not hold true for everybody, and I hope this doesn't kind of offend anybody's kind of sensibilities, but the reality, at least from what I've realized now, is a lot of people that I know have done degrees. It counts for potentially maybe that first job. The reality is I'm of the generation where a lot of people had degrees, so arguably didn't count that much. You're still going into <laughs> relatively low paying graduate jobs. And yeah, it's that kind of hype upness that you have trying to get to that stage that makes it larger than what it needs to be, basically. So unfortunately, I didn't realize that at that point. So I'd put a lot of pressure on myself to do that, essentially. The irony was as well, I was doing a degree and I knew full well at the point where I was at the height of my panic attacks that I was going to be starting my own business anyway. So it, the degree grade was relevant to just my own self. It wasn't even that I was going for a job. Like I, I wasn't going to use it for a job. I was going to set up my own business. So it was more to prove to myself that I could do it. <laughs> Couldn't rationalize it then the way that I'm rationalizing it now. But, <laughs> but and there was a whole bunch of other things as well. I was stressing because there was a lot of friends that had kind of been rushed to hospitals. They had a lot of serious health conditions. Ironically enough, I had a very good therapist at that point who made a very astute kind of point that was you are stressing yourself out and making yourself sick because you're stressing about other people they might be friends but the true reality is would they do the same thing to you and I love my friends dearly but that's when it sunk in with me and I just went oh probably not and that was a good turning point for me as well but along the way of dealing with all this and again as I said earlier on I hadn't realized that it was happening but actually that point of routine, I'm very routine led and I know a lot of people out there tend to be as well. So actually having that routine of caring for my houseplants, I didn't have that many as I said at that point, and kind of getting into that mind frame of I've got this to care for and I need to do this every day or kind of whatever my schedule might have been at that point. I don't think I had enough plants to do an everyday watering, but it did quieten things down because it was a moment where I didn't have to think about things. And I know that's not the case for everybody. I've spoken to a few people that they can't switch off like that. But I think based on those conversations that we've had, it still helps. So let's dive into that a bit more, essentially. It's one of those things where that kind of notion of kind of doing the same task every so often does kind of bring some soothing elements to at least my own psyche. It did at least for me, and it still does now, to be fair. So I've got the large collection and I'm gonna be completely transparent with you. It's been a rough couple of weeks recently. There's been a lot on, there's been a lot on with work. There's been a lot of construction work. I can thankfully say it finished yesterday. So, there's been a lot on and I've not had much downtime. Most of my weekends I'm either filming or editing as well. So my work week really isn't a five day work week. My work week tends to be a six or seven day work week. And I know that this will burn myself out. So I am trying to be kind to myself and take some time. Uh, part of the extra challenge at the moment is that every single weekend is booked on top of everything else to see friends because it's a thing that happens. I don't know if it happens everywhere. It doesn't happen in Greece because we're a warm country and summer and the sun isn't quite as exciting as it is in the UK, but I feel it's not just me. There's a lot of people that essentially the summer comes, the heat comes, the sun comes, and you cram as many things as you possibly can in every single day of that summer period just to get the maximum benefit, <laughs> which usually for me at least, I get to like 
autumn and I know a lot of people like autumn and I'm wondering whether or not some part of it is this as well. I get to autumn and I'm just like, I love autumn because everything can stop now. <laughs> I find it very taxing to be social constantly basically, but I mean, that's just me. Um, and yeah, and actually now with this collection, I know that this is my zen time. I know that the morning when I come to water, and I know that I've got a lot of watering now, it's the summer, it's a lot more watering and all these things, but it's still one of those cases where I can put some headphones in, listen to an audiobook, that's the thing for me, and just switch the rest of the world off, basically. I can then care for my plants. Interestingly enough, and I've said this before, the kind of element of mental health that comes along the way as well, because I've, I've had conversations with a lot of people on here and on my DMs on Instagram where they are talking about the stress as well that is caused sometimes by plants. And that usually comes up in a couple of ways. One could be it's overwhelming. And my two cents or my tiny bit of advice on that point is if it stops making you happy, stop it or reduce it, basically. It's as simple as that. Don't keep doing it if it's going to add more onto you. I know there's taking care of your plants, but if you're a good plant parent, you probably would find people to then take care of your plants if you're no longer going to be caring for them. But And it's also acceptable if, you, if you're not even in that headspace, you, ultimately at that stage, your number one priority should be your health and should be your mental health. So do what feels good for you. Don't put any extra pressure on stress on yourself. Um, but at that point as well is reduce or stop it entirely. It, 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 it doesn't need to be one more thing that weighs you down. However, the flip side of that as well is if it does give you joy, do it, essentially. The other element of stress being caused by plant collections that I see a lot of the times is pests. <laughs> And I'm, I'm laughing kind of awkwardly here because I was the same. And again, I'm going to be very transparent with you and just kind of say there were points at very early stages of my plant journey, especially when you move from kind of very common plants that if something happens to them, potentially you can replace them quite easily to the slightly rarer or harder to find house plants that are very coveted, potentially have big price points and you get something like a pest. I had sleepless nights. No, because I sleep like the dead. <laughs> Not necessarily sleepless nights, but like nightmares and things like that. So obviously it was still going on in my head about like, how am I gonna deal with this? And oh my God, I've got like thrips now. Oh no, I've got mealybugs or I've got spider mites. Ah. And the problem is, and I can say this, and all of us can say this when we've passed it, until we're blue in the face. Or will you listen? I don't know because I didn't listen when other people were saying this to me. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. I get a lot of comments when I talk about pets and I'm a bit blase about it now going, oh my God, I could never be like you and I could never get that. The, the reality, and I'm never condescending when I say this, is give yourself time and you will get there as well. You will get to the point, you might not be as blase as me or some other people, but it will be less stimulating to like, your, your brain at that point to just kind of go, oh my God, ah, there's all this and, and I'm stressing about this now. It does get better, I promise. Purely because, and that will only come with time, where you'll start being better at seeing those pests at earlier stages. And I'm trying to see now if I can show you an example. I'll insert some videos here as well. This week's been very warm and a spider mites have gone bonkers in this space as well because I have to have the windows open to cool the space down a bit. The humidity levels are down so I've got a lot more spider mites in the last couple of weeks basically and it has stressed out my plant and normally it would freak me out essentially especially because one of them has done some severe damage to my very prized philodendron serpents. <laughs> but you know what? I'm very proud of the place that I am now where literally the only reaction I had to that is okay I'll take the plant out, I'll spray it down in the garden because it's a bit warmer now, get rid of all of those pests. Luckily, I had just ordered some um, predator mite satchels and I just needed to get the majority of the infestation off, then put the satchel on, and I'm okay with that. But that comes with time, basically. So be kind to yourself in the meantime 
whilst you get that life experience. There is also a lot of research that's been done, and I'll see if I can find some articles. I've seen them along the way about how plants can improve your mood, uh, can improve your space, thus improving your mood as well. So there's all of these things, and there have been studies that have been done to prove that this is the case as well. I don't know. This is something that we used to learn in school when I was very young, and I don't know how much of this is science or pseudoscience or kind of hearsay, but... I vaguely remember a teacher saying this. We used to have the green chalkboards that the teachers would kind of write during the lessons on that old. Um, and at some point, I think we asked them, because some classrooms had black chalkboards, but a lot of them were getting the green ones. And I'm just like, why green? And they said, because apparently there were studies that were done, and this is the bit that I'm, I'm not sure, I've never seen those studies, that green, because it kind of, emulates what you would see in nature, it has a very calming effect on us as human beings. So actually having this much green in your space probably would have the same effect. Again, as I said, I don't know if it's accurate, but I like to think it and it makes me happy. <laughs>So talking about some specific plants that had a real impact, and again I've mentioned this on previous videos, I took a pothos cutting from a mum's plant, which then moved with me to my flat in London when I was a student and I was caring for it. And it had a lot of significance to me, that one specific pothos plant of all things, and I've got all these different plants now, because to me there's a story behind it. And I think for a lot of us there is usually one or two of those plants, not everybody, that might be kind of essentially by this point family heirlooms. I'm pretty sure that pothos that I took a cutting from has always been in my mother's collection since I was a kid. It was one of the plants that I used to water on the balcony when I was five. And obviously different permutations. It might not be the same original mother plant, but it might be propagates or propagates of it and that's still around. So to me, in my head, that's the same plant basically. It's been around for a while. Um, so that had significance to me and it was something slightly soothing to my own soul when I was caring for that plant to just kind of go, I used to do this when I was five when I had no care in the world, and that alone helped with me. So things like that are quite good. Flip side of that, I know a lot of people that inherit these heirloom type plants from their family, and that causes stress, because you're worried then you're going, this plant has survived for 20 or 30 years in somebody's care, I really hope I don't kill it, basically. And again, this might be a bit of a concept, it's okay to say, no, I don't feel ready to take care of this plant yet. You will eventually, hopefully anyway, <laughs> you will eventually get to the point where you might want to try it because you'll feel that connection then, well, I think anyway, to the wider kind of community or family that cared for that plant as well. There's also something else to be said about these plants. Like for instance, the pothos, I'll give you an example of that one specifically. There is the flip side of that, kind of going, if these plants have survived 20 to 30 years are probably not the best level of care. Because again, I've seen a lot of, I've had conversations with a lot of people and I've seen their family plant, and they might be 20 or 30 years old, but they're looking a bit busted. And that's fine. I think that has so much character. But go easy on yourself because if you've got a love for plants and you've been caring for plants, even if you don't have that many, you probably have more knowledge in your little noggin from caring of your own plants to be able to care for something that has probably been neglected for a large part of its life. So, but I would still advise talk to the family member who's been caring for the plant last and see what they were doing and don't change its routine drastically, even if you know it is entirely wrong. I'll, I'll give you a very extreme example. If they've been watering it with coffee, I'm not saying water it with coffee, but taper it off slowly because the pop up I get with rolls. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of get it to where you need to get it, but be aware of its conditions beforehand. So if you don't already incorporate plants into your kind of mental health routine, there's a few things that I've heard from people that, that deal with that in their routine, and I thought I'd share with you, maybe give you some ideas, basically. Obviously, I talked about me, I can put my audiobook in and just get to watering and caring for the plants, and I think I'm at my happiest when I'm pottering with plants. 
bad, I know, but I'm assuming based on my audience, I might not be the only one. Uh, I think I have found my people. Um, but it's things like that. So kind of listening to an audiobook whilst you're doing your care, maybe listening to a podcast. It could be plant related. There's loads of plant related podcasts. I've mentioned them on previous videos. Or it could not, basically. It could be something else. It could also be just listening to music. It could be quiet. I know a lot of people that love that moment of being able to take care of their plants, especially if they've got loads of little kids running around and dogs and pets and all these things and husbands and wives that make a lot of noise and generally the, the household noise where you can just kind of switch off and have no noise for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour of just watering your plants. I think that can also be therapeutic as well, not just the actual watering of the plants, but the quietness basically at that point. So things like that. I know a lot of people, and this, was, this is something that surprised me, I never would have thought about this, but I know a lot of people um, put on YouTube videos and listen to them in the background. They've got them playing in the background whilst they're doing their plant chores, which is amazing, basically. So there's there's all these different things that you could do. The other thing to bear in mind is it depends on how often you want to perform this level of self-care, basically. So for the overwaterers like me out there, it's often because we need to keep watering. You probably don't, but you know, <laughs> it's the reality of an overwater. I need to water, you probably don't. But it's things like that and just making sure that you're also getting the right plants. There is a biting point as well in terms of, I'll be very specific with this. So there is a tipping point. So for instance, I really, really enjoy my collection in the winter and autumn. And that might surprise people because generally there's not that much growth happening at that time. But for me at least, there's less care and less watering. I did say that I enjoy it, but there is a limit to that as well. So for instance, I know that in the summer I need to some days when it's really hot, I can spend an hour or two watering this entire collection, then at least another half an hour watering the back garden and the front garden, and then probably another half an hour to an hour each day watering the allotment. That's usually before I've even started my day, my work day. So it gets a bit much and I don't enjoy it quite so much around this time of the year. I do love it and I like to take stock in autumn and just kind of go look at all the growth that I've had because when it's happening and I'm trying really hard not to like let all my plants dry out to nothing I can't really see the wood for the trees at that point and that's fine but I recognize that about myself and I know that that period isn't going to be the one for me I can take that moment of clarity of solace of kind of peace and do that in autumn and that's absolutely fine for me which is why I have all the best intentions to propagate things in the summer, but I'm just like, that's a, that's a, that's a, a bottom of the list for me, because I've got too much to deal with right now. And that's fine. But the point I was trying to make with that very long-winded story is find your biting points, because if you're doing this for self-care, and for instance, you fill your space with ferns that need a lot of watering very often and all these things, that might also get too much it might then start counteracting. So find that. If you're not that person that needs to be doing that level of self-care and essentially caring for the plants on a regular basis, maybe get plants that need less care. Or if you need it quite frequently, get more of those kind of high maintenance needy plants because it will give you an excuse to spend more time in your collection. As with anything with this, and I did mention it earlier on in the video, I did get counseling and it helped me. I also did um, meditation and it helped me. Everybody's journey with their own mental health is different. So I would really never want to preach and say, this is the way that I've done it. It will work for everybody else. You need to find your own path and your own journey. But hopefully through my little story, it might give you an inkling of how I've done it. If other people are brave, and if you are, I do applaud you. Uh, of sharing their own kind of journeys down below that might give some ideas of at least things that you can try that could help potentially. But yeah, I know this has been a very different topic, but I know mental health is something that a large chunk of my audience kind of talks to me on a regular basis. So I thought I'd do a video more exclusively on this and hopefully it might help some of you or all of you out there essentially. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon and I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day.
Thanks. Bye.